Good morning guys, this is our second full day on board the Carnival Spirit to our Alaskan cruise and that's it right there. Parts of Alaska on the Lower Peninsula. We're about six hours out from getting to Icy Point, which is our first point of call. And I'm going to see if I can find any wildlife this morning. So one of the things you have to do when you take a cruise is to go to the brunch. Usually it's once or twice a cruise, depending on how long it is, and it is absolutely wonderful. And this right here is the best thing on any carnival cruise. It's called the 24-hour French toast, and it is unbelievably delicious. found some whales here. No, it's a whole family, the whole pie. All right, we're about three hours out from Icy Point. Is that right? Icy Strait, which is a small uh, city or island mostly inhabited by native people, but is used as like a private cruise ship area now. We just arrived here in Icy Point Strait. There's currently two carnival boats in port. It's us on the Spirit and that's the Splendor over there. And here in Icy Port we didn't take an excursion. We're just gonna go wander around and we're gonna take the telecabin over there. It goes over to like a lookout point. So come with us and see what we find to do in Icy Point Strait, Alaska. All right, so this is the first area we get to when we got off the uh, ship. There's a free gondola here that sort of takes you to a cool lookout platform, but as you can see, everybody's waiting to take it. There's a gondola over here, I guess you can pay for, which is $50. And there's a wilderness gift shop here as well. And I think that's what we're going to go look at first, the gift shop. And this is also not where the museum is, huh? All right, small little, very packed gift shop. We might come check it out later. But for now, there's too many people in here for me. So here's a general map of Icy Point Strait, the cruise ship edition, I guess. So there's two... Uh, spots for cruise ships to dock. There's a transportation gondola that will take you sort of between the two cruise ship hubs. And then there's this one, which is called the mountaintop gondola. That one's $50 to take and takes you up to the top of the mountain where there's a hiking trail and some other really neat things to see. And it is also where the zip lines are. And that zip line is the longest known zip line in the world. It's right at a mile long. So we decided to first take the free transportation gondola and check out the other cruise ship area. And then we're gonna go take the mountain top gondola and check out the top of the mountain. Yeah. Look, you can walk on, on top of this. Oh, I think that's more like the adventure park that goes there with the- uh, adventure park, it's really- Yeah, this is the adventure wild. park that goes with the uh, zip line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This zip lines are neat, but I don't have any need to take a mile long zip line today. All right, so we're at the other end of the transportation gondola. Uh, we're next to the Splendor now. And over here, there is a lot more buildings. The, there's the historic cannery here, uh, Duck Point Bar, Duck Point Smokehouse. And I'm not sure what that larger building over here is. It doesn't say.
So we found this cool little side path. If you go right to the side of the duck bar, there's this little walking path that takes you down to the beach. And then you can follow this around to the uh, old salmon cannon factory, which there's a gift shop there and a little museum. And that's where we're heading for right now. So we took the beach hike, uh, walking path here, and we finally made it to the Icy Point Museum, which is the old salmon cannon factory here. So inside the salmon cannon factory museum is also the gift shop. There's a salmon gift shop with everything salmon. You can get all sorts of salmon products in here. And there's even more of the old salmon canning factory here for you to go take a look at, explore, it's sort of interesting. All the different types of salmon. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sakai. Yep. Uh -huh. A lot of interesting history in here about salmon and how they spawn and the different species of them. All the old canning equipment. Oh wow, this stuff's all. Intermixed in the Canning Factory Museum is, of course, gift shops, all sorts of souvenirs and gifts to buy from here. Except for what we were looking for, and that was a belt for me because I forgot mine at home. But that's okay. Well, I lost Chris to the Christmas ornament selection. $21. But it's a nice glass ornament, but. $21. These are pretty cool. They're the giant pressurized vessels that they used to use to can the salmon in. So you'd can the salmon and put it in here and pasteurize it and pest. Like a freezer. No, no, you, it's like a pressure cooker to kill all the bacteria and to seal the cans right. They said they cook for 90 minutes. At 240 degrees, yeah. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. The old assembly line that used to have the cans rolling off of them with the canned salmon. It's cool seeing all this old equipment. The Crab House is another restaurant here in Icy Port, Icy Point. And there's a lot of people getting down with tons and tons of snow crab and king crab. We're not gonna eat here, we're just gonna keep walking around and exploring. But this definitely looks like one of the top places to grab some crab if, that, if that's your thing. Well, there was a mini donut stand here, but it's not open now. A little kayak excursions over there. It's actually a really neat place. Oh, pressure is nice. It's just a nice walk around. And you can even walk to the town of Hunan. Hunan? How do you say that, baby? H-O-O-N. Hunan. Hunan. It's a mile and a half. And you can also buy a town shuttle ticket for $5 if you don't wanna walk, which you buy right here. But I think we're gonna walk. It's beautiful out. Really your only problem is we dressed entirely too warm. The, the ships are Those are so cute. cute, the little old wooden fishing ships. So this is the little walking path we're gonna take, the Hunan Vet Veterans Memorial Seawalk. It goes from Icy Strait Point where the cruise ships dock. Oh, I lied. Oh, I see, between the ferry terminal and Icy Strait Point. And then if you want to, you can keep taking it all the way to downtown Hunan, which is 1.6 miles. 
It's a really nice big sidewalk. So if you don't feel like taking the mile and a half walk to check out the little village, you can take the little bus system here, which is only $5. Hey guys. It's actually probably not a terrible option, but I have to tell you, this walk is absolutely beautiful. And I think I much rather walk it. Looks like it's well marked, lots of signboards where restrooms are and where to get to the different places here. And there's not a ton of them. So I don't think you can get lost here. We have 30 minutes to get to town. Yep. The town of Hunak. Which is a Native American village. It's been here for a long time and they operate both of these uh, cruise ship berths here. So it's a privately owned terminal. I don't know if you can see it, but right here is that mile long zip line. And they are loud. When they come down, it sounds like a jet plane flying down. And the views here are beautiful. I wasn't sure this was gonna be a very good port, but the views alone are worth it. It's breathtaking here. So along this walk, there has been a good number of signboards explaining to you about the local area, the animals you might be able to see, and the local name. Sea otters, I'd love to see some sea otters or some bears. As of now, not too much sea life we've seen. So this signboard here is more history of the town and it also explains how this got created. Originally, you could only get through this part of the road when it was low tide. You actually had to go around the outside of this rock when it was low tide down on the ocean side. But when the cannery opened, they blew a small hole wide enough for a couple people to walk through. And then later on, they eventually blew the entire top off this section to allow for normal road traffic, but they still call this area the tunnel. I love local interesting signboards like that. Oh, and there's a redhead here over here at the bench. Let's go see what she's doing. I wonder what this redhead over here is doing. Yeah, there is a big old raven up there in the tree. It's a really cool looking spot. This signboard also has a brief history of the area and major events. Really interesting signboards to read. If you look closely, you may be able to see a petroglyph. Huh. Let's see if we can find the little petroglyph. You see the petroglyph over there, baby? It, it looks like a little boat, I guess. It's somewhere, I don't know. I don't see it either, but it's somewhere right around here, according to the signboard, but I can't find it. And they got a cool little shipyard here. This is also the ferry terminal that you can get out to a couple of these different smaller islands. It's actually a fairly active uh, shipping yard. A lot of these ships are being worked on and rebuilt as we speak. Sort of interesting to see. All right, so we found a grocery store here and a gallon of milk is 8.69. Yeah, 8.69 for a gallon of milk. $3 for a dozen and a half eggs and $8 for a pound of butter. And that's how much food is in a grocery store in Icy Port, Alaska. Hey Chris, what'd you get for a snack? I got an ice cream in Alaska. <laughs> is it because it's so hot out here? We didn't think we would want it, but it is warm. Hot. And we definitely overdressed. Even just wearing blue jeans and a long sleeve shirt, I'm too hot. Look at this. We even found an Orthodox church out here. Didn't think I would find that. All right, we finally reached the little town of Huna here. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but it was a really nice walk. Still got about an extra half mile, I think, to walk sort of through town. 
It's even a little island out there it looks like you can go walk out to. Cool little totem pole here, just hanging out in a random parking lot. A couple little stores in town here and churches. Mostly a lot of industrial stuff here, right by the my own dock, I guess. Let's see here. Coffee shop. More informational boards and public restrooms. Always helpful that there's public restrooms. They also have a bank here right in town, the Tongas Federal Credit Union. It's open. There's an ATM inside in case you want to get some cash. And it looks like up here they're like building native traditional boats. And that's the building for the Indian Association right here, the totem poles. And check this out. This is actually where they are carving a totem pole. I'm not currently working on it, but you can see it, it's halfway done, I would guess. Sort of neat to see a totem pole under construction. So if you decide not to take an excursion and just go walk around Icy Point, if you find your way to the Fisherman's Daughter, that's the restaurant right there, you can make your way to the, this is the main tours uh, lobby here. Most of the tours that come from the cruise ships, uh, this is where you buy them from. And this is also where you can buy your shuttle tickets that will take you back to the boats if you don't feel like walking the two miles back. It's only $3 for the shuttle one way. And we're going to take it because we are hot. It is hot out here and we are overdressed. So this is the dock. I guess most of the excursions go off of this dock. The whale watching excursions and the fishing, things like that. We're just going to take a little walk out and see if we find anything neat floating around in the water maybe. There's Chris having fun taking pictures. Yeah, we found a nice cool breeze out here. So we're back in the gift shop slash old salmon canning factory. And as you can see in the afternoon, a lot less busy in here. And Chris can find all sorts of useless souvenirs to buy, like the world's <laughs> smallest backpack. We got all sorts of cool stuff just lying around here. These are old style crab pots. King Tanner crab pots back there, the big square ones. And we found another building back here. Looks like more of the salmon canning factory museum. That is an old sewing machine right there. Look at look at this. Mm hmm More shops. Oh, there is more shops over here too, huh? Bone sh bone fish. Yes. You can buy a totem pole. Oh yeah. Well, we think we might have found the most adventurous thing here to do. Just go in the ocean. The water is a very nice warm 43 degrees today. <laughs> and we've been told this is probably one of the warmest days of the year here. So there's even more food options here as we wake, make our way back into the uh, cruise port terminal area. The oyster shack, half dozen or by the dozen oysters. And this is the orc. And this is the famous orca statue here really cool and we are back to the first cruise ship slip where the splendor is and then we're going to take the transportation transportation gondola to our cruise ship the spirit and we're still deciding if we're going to take the gondola to the top of the mountain fifty dollars seems a little bit steep for a gondola ride but you're only here once i think we're gonna do it right. let's go pay a hundred dollars to go to the top of a mountain just the two of us. Just the two of us. This is the, the free gondola that takes you between the two different cruise ship terminals. This is cool. Underneath us here, you can see the little obstacle course, ropes course. So we just got done paying $50 a ticket to take the sky glider 
of 53 after taxes if you want to <laughs> be exact. Christina wants to make sure you know it's taxes too. So there's supposed to be a short hiking trail at the top, but for some reason it's closed. So we're going to find out if it's worth it to pay $50 to go up to the top of the mountain here. You can see how new this gondola is by like all the freshly cut trees and the freshly broken ground. You can tell this gondola is only, I think it's two years old. <laughs> Chris isn't very sure about this gondola. She says it's a little scary. It is scary. It's high up. I, I'll tell you, it and is. When you move, gondola move. <laughs> it bounces and all around. Then we're right on top of the bears. <laughs> and we, we forgot to take the bear spray. We don't we have a spray. We don't need bear spray, baby. We, we don't need bear spray. So this guy right here is the security guard up here and he said one of the first groups of hikers he took down this morning, two bears decided to chase him and he had to use his pepper spray and set off his bear air horns and that's why they've closed the trails for the day. It's a warm day out today and the trail goes right by a small pond that the bears are using to cool off in today. So just out of an abundance of caution and the fact that there's more bears on this island than humans, the trail is closed. And honestly, if the hiking trail down is closed, there's not really a ton of reason to pay $50 to come up here on the gondola. It's a beautiful view, but $50 is a little steep. I believe the zip line is $100 or $150 uh, to take down, which includes the gondola ride. So if you're gonna do that, probably worth it but if a hiking trail down isn't open or available I would not pay the $50 to come up here again right baby By the Heritage Theater. This is where they do their native tribal dances. It was included as part of our $50 gondola ticket, so at least you get a little bit something for your $50 gondola ticket. Let's see and see how good it is. This is a no filming show, so you'll have to come see for yourself. So we just finished at the little tribal show. It is actually better than people say. It's nice and short, maybe 15 minutes. Yeah, 15 minutes. And they do a great explanation. 25 minutes. 25 minutes. They do uh, an explanation of their uh, tribe's history and their stories of the raven and how the raven brought them the, the moon and the stars and the water and brought the salmon into the streams. And it's really interesting. And then they do a little, uh, a little dance. dance and song after that. And Heck, that, cool. that was worth closer to 50 bucks than taking the gondola to the top. <laughs> so I'm not even sure if you really need to have your gondola bracelet to go watch the show. Nobody really checked, but they yeah, said but you're supposed to have it. it. So they, they probably saw Right, they probably just saw it and didn't ask us about it. So back to the ship now. That's the end of our day here at Icy Point. And it's a nice day. It's a nicer port stop than I thought it would be. Yeah, it was a beautiful day. It was we were overdressed, but it was mm -hmm. nice. <laughs> Even the locals say this must be one of the warmest days of the year. They asked us to leave all the sunshine behind. Yes. That's it for That's it for today, for guys. Straight point. I hope you found something interesting or hope or uh, helpful in our video. Uh, tomorrow, next video will be Juno, so stay tuned for our next video coming out. We'll be in Juno. And we're gonna go dog sliding. Oh yeah, we're gonna go take the dog sled camp excursion. So. If you want to see what that's like stay with us uh, like and like this video it really helps us out and please subscribe to our channel is absolutely free to subscribe and you'll get our latest notifications to see all of our newest movies and they're all, all gonna be from Alaska until the next destination till the next destination so we'll see you guys later thanks for watching